So in this video, I want to talk about anti-seizure medications. And before we start talking about anti-seizure medications, we should have a general understanding of what is a seizure and what is epilepsy and how do you classify the different seizure types. So a seizure is an uncontrolled electrical activity in the brain. And also very important, it needs to be hypersynchronized. So not only that a lot of neurons are firing at the same time, they also need to be synchronized in firing. So a seizure can have very different symptoms depending on where in the brain this abnormal activity happens. So for example, if there is a seizure in the frontal lobe where movements are controlled, you might have motor symptoms. But obviously if the seizure is somewhere else located, then there might be different symptoms. So it all depends on the location. The next thing I want to point out that there can be a lot of different reasons for having a seizure. There could be a brain tumor, there can be meningitis, there could be hypoglycemia or hyponatremia. So obviously if somebody is presenting with a seizure, you need to do a very thorough examination to figure out what could be the reason. If there is no obvious reason and the seizure is recurring, then this patient might have epilepsy. So let's start next to talk about the classification of seizure. So generally, we distinguish between partial seizures and generalized seizures. So partial seizure means that there's a restriction of the seizure to one hemisphere, so only a part of your brain, therefore partial seizure. In contrast, generalized seizure means that it involves both hemispheres, so it's generally all over the brain. So within the partial seizure, we distinguish between simple partial and complex partial. And the difference is just that the consciousness is in the simple partial not impaired. So for example, the patient has a seizure in the left frontal lobe, so it would show up on the right side with some jerking movements, for example, and this patient is going to talk about the seizure and is completely aware of what is happening. This will be a simple partial seizure because it's restricted to one hemisphere, it's only showing up on one side, and consciousness is not impaired. If the patient would stare blankly and is not knowing what's going on and has the same jerky movements, for example, on the right arm, then we would talk about a complex partial seizure because consciousness is impaired. In complex partial seizures, you see a lot of times so-called automatism, repetitive movements that the patient is not aware of. So for example, lip smacking or picking on the clothes. So that will be a complex partial seizure with automatism. Then let's move on to the generalized seizure. So it involves both hemispheres and we distinguish tonic-clonic, tonic-clonic, atonic and absence seizures. The tonic-clonic seizures are also sometimes referred as grand mal. Grand means French big and mal is malaise, so big disease. And these tonic-clonic seizures are characterized by a tonic phase, so tonic meaning that a stiffening phase, so the whole body stiffens, and then a clonic phase, so you have jerking movements, so contractions alternating with relaxations. Then we can have only the tonic phase, so only the stiffening, only the jerking, that would be a clonic seizure. You could have atonic, which means you lose all muscle tone. And then the last example for a generalized seizure is the absence seizure, a very specific type, often referred as petit mal, so small disease. And so this happens particularly in kids, and they lose consciousness for about 5 to 10 seconds, about 20 to 100 times a day. And then they are back to normal. So they're always going to miss a couple of sentences and have to catch up. So obviously it's very difficult for them to stay on top of things.